Hello there everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. Today's tutorial, we are going to be going over how to drive a very simplified steam locomotive in Train Simulator 2022. Let's get right into it guys. Okay, so, um, even though it wasn't the best, please do make sure that you did watch my how to drive a diesel locomotive video. Um, and that's also just because I will be referring to some terms as I already did in the last one, but that doesn't mean you have to go watch it. I will still explain what they are, but just for better understanding, for even simpler controls on an even simpler type of locomotive, um, just that's what I recommend. So, what are some things that we might remember? So one here, even though it's very different, and we will get into why it's different, this is your reverser here. The same thing, so all the way backward is full. Um, all the way backwards is full reverse, and all the way forward is full forward, and then right in the middle is a then you know it's, it's neutral. Here, I believe this. Um, so this is our steam brake. Um, so this, or this could also be um, known as a combined brake, which is just it mixes the independent and train brake together so it can it can basically be anything so it means it applies the brakes on the on the locomotive and on the train as well um, another one so this one here is our throttle um, but in steam locomotive people terms this is um, known as the regulator For some reason we're shaking that's kind of weird is that not funky um, somewhere in here I don't exactly know there is also there it is there's that guy right there, and that guy is our sander that just moved right there. This just drops sand right in front of the wheels, and you can get traction if you have a lot of traction, like wet, wet or you know dirty rails, and that causes the wheels to spin. So let's go over some some newer stuff now, and then I'll I'll explain a little bit further on. So. Um, one main thing that people probably know about steam locomotives is that there's the, you know, there's the fire hole door here, that's like what's in the firebox. And most people know that's like where the, the fuel goes in, you know, like people shovel coal in, which you know, that is very correct. That is where you use shovel coal into the firebox. Um, some other new ones, as you can see, these guys here, this big guy and this big guy, and so these are water gauge glasses. And so they, they tell you the water level inside the boiler. Um, and I'll go over why that's important uh, a little bit later on. This locomotive does have something that's a little fancy. And I would get to the, this is a hydrostatic lubricator. Which um, I believe this one just, so this one just injects oil, basically like droplets of oil, into the actual steam line. And it sends it to wherever it needs to go. But we're not going to be really focusing on this because we don't really have a need to. Um, so some some other new things here is also going to be this guy here, which is going to be called the blower. And what the blower does is so for a fire, you know, you need oxygen. And you know, if you've ever you know how to create a fire, you know, or you know, like like from scratch, you know, you, you got your stick there, and you know, you're you whittle away at it, so it gets nice and hot, and once it's hot enough, then you blow on it to give it some oxygen. And obviously then, you know, it gets all orange or white, and you know, then it, it, you know, it will catch on fire. And that's because, you know, fire needs oxygen. And so, in that same sense, you know, the, the fire inside the firebox needs oxygen. Well, let's say, you know, we're not moving, and there's no real way for, you know, air to get put into the firebox. And I'll also explain how that works. Um, so what we do is we use something called the blower here, which is the blower. That's it all the way on. And you can also watch the stack. So watch the stack as I turn it on. See how like it, you no, know, maybe becomes a little bit more extreme. That's because there's there's a little jet of steam that's being blasted up um, with the smoke, and so what happens is when it does that, it actually creates um, a tiny vacuum up here. And so then what happens is then it sucks air through the bottom part of the firebox and it sucks it up 
through um through and over the coals through the flues and then out the stack uh, which then it, it draws the fire and makes it burn nice and hot but then the problem with that is you're using steam to feed your fire so sometimes um, that can end up just um, not actually working because you know you don't really need that extra air because you're already enough you know, of a draft um, and you're already using steam so it, just, it ends up being becoming a waste and you have to start losing steam pressure so like I was saying there was another way that air can get in and so that's here's something called the dampers which is right here and so it's just a little flap basically on the bottom of the firebox um, it's right below like where all the coal sit on these grates and so it's right below it basically and so as you move um, these little you can't see them on here but they're like they're little flaps that open and so you know the air comes this way and it hits the flap and then it just it gets it gets kind of scooped up and it gets scooped up into the firebox in here and then it'll do the same thing kind of like the it's you know so then the air will go down the flues you know over the coals you know it'll make the fire burn hotter um, that's really, like I said, like where the blower comes into play as well, because with the dampers you have to be moving for it to work, because that's how you scoop in the air, it's just by moving. But the blower can do it even while you're stationary. So the blower is normally a stationary sort of tool that you use on the locomotive. Um, another, um, another one on here, which I believe it's this guy, yep, is the cylinder cocks. And basically all that is, is I can turn them on now. I'm not really going to do much because I don't have the regulator open. I guess I can open up the regulator here. We're not going to move off because we're in neutral. But you can see all this steam coming out. I'm going to close them. And so what the cylinder cocks do is it, blow, it uses steam from inside the pistons and it blows it out. Because what can happen is... Um, when the locomotive is done running for the day and you know it gets all shut down um, and then the engine gets all cold um, there is just there's just the, the smallest amount of steam that's still left inside the pistons because you know they are airtight um, and so then what happens you know is then that that steam will then cool down and then it turns back into water and so because of that you know you end up having a problem where you go into hydrostatic um, hydrostatic lock if there's water inside of the pistons and you know that is not a good thing because then the wheels will not turn and so um it, it's only like the first part of the session like where we are right here where we're not even moved the locomotive yet it, you're normally going to have it open i normally have it open for about a minute while we're moving and then you can close it because it does reduce the actual power that the locomotive gives out because it's using some of the steam pressure from the inside of the piston. Um, I'd say probably the last, probably one of the most important things on the locomotive here are the injectors. And so I'll show you how the injectors work here. And so for the injectors, you have a water valve and a steam valve. And so what the injector does is it takes water from the tanks or or wherever wa extra water is stored on the locomotive and it pumps it into the boiler and so to do that what you would do is then first you'd open up your water valve like this and then you're going to let the injectors run um just with the water going through it for about 12 seconds because i'm just going to close this while i talk here because injectors do not work while they're hot that is a big thing with locomotives. So you run cold water first through them, so then they're nice and um, so then they're nice and cold once you finally turn on the steam. So you can have that, and then you're gonna turn on the steam, um, and then it'll it'll start to funnel in through, and you'll you'll hear it. It'll be a very audible noise. It kind of sounds like someone going. Ksh. If that if I had to do an impression of it, there we go. Um, on some more realistic locomotives, um, they might not have it where you can just, you just, it's on or all the way off. Um, there are, you do actually have to, like, find, like, the correct point on where, um, the injector catches. So that's where I, that's what I was doing there when I was like this and stuff. Because I was trying to see if I had to do that or not. 
But since this one's a, a much simpler locomotive, it does not have that. But some of the more advanced will have that. And so there's there's normally, well, there's not going to, there's normally two injectors, but there's always going to be two ways to get water into the boiler on coal-fired locomotives. Um, so this side is exhaust, and this side is live steam. And so live steam, as it says, so it's going to be steam that's coming straight from the boiler. And exhaust steam is the steam that's already been used by the pistons, and it's being recycled um, and ran through the injectors to pump water. But for that, you have to have the throttle open, so then, you know, the, the pistons and all that stuff is actually being used. So, now let's go over um, a little bit more complicated things. So, the reverser down here. So you'll you'll see here, you know, there's a handle and there's different notches I can set this thing into. Instead of just you know, instead of like a diesel where it's just like either backwards, you know, forwards or neutral. You can think of this basically kind of like the gears, um, like on a bike, and also like um, a, like like a stick shift car. Um, so like like on a bike, you know, you have like your highest gear, which might be six, and so you'll you'll gain speed very quickly but um, for that payoff of extra speed you have to pedal a lot harder and so because of that um, you know you have to do a lot more work and so you get tired easily and so tired tired metaphor is just basically steam consumption so basically doing the max amount of work you can but you're also going to be using the max amount of steam pressure you can but you know say like right like right here in the forward position right there in that little white line being uh, neutral you know being right here you're using the least amount of power but you're also using the least amount of steam um and so that's where you know it becomes economical to you know as you're driving to start notching it back towards neutral probably until you know about there i'd say probably until about 15 25 percent and then you don't really want to go anywhere farther after those points, either forward or reverse. Um, um, and I also said, you know, it's also just like a, like a stick shift car. And I say that because, you know, like when you start off a car that, you know, it's, you know, it's got a stick on it. You know, you can't just go into like fifth gear and start driving. You got to go into first gear and you got to go into second, third, fourth, and fifth, and then, you know, sixth. Because, you know, you just, that's how you speed up. Because it's just, after a while, okay, well, this gear is not going to make me go any faster, so then you switch to the new gear. And then that new gear is going to keep going. And so that's basically how it works. So, all the way forward is basically first gear, and then as you start notching back here, so then, like, right, like right to here, this would be, like, sixth gear. So, remember, the less, so, not as much power, more steam efficiency, less steam efficiency, more power. But then you're also going to start in here. And then as you get faster, naturally, you're just going to want to start to bring the reverser towards you because it's more economical because it saves steam pressure. And it also allows you to gain speed because um, at a certain point, the, the pressure you're pu putting into the pistons just, it, it's, it's, not, it's not what the pistons can handle at that exact time or something along the lines of that. I don't exactly... Uh, know why there's a lot of math behind that certain thing but um and you'll you'll also you'll be able to see it just like like in the like in a car you know you'll you'll set the red line and it'll go boom 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 this sort of thing will kind of happen with a steam locomotive you'll, you'll feel it start to lurch and so you'll bring it back and you'll feel it pick back up again alrighty so that's that's about it so let's let's get started here. So we're gonna go forward here, and keep in mind everything I said about the forward direction here, and I was talking about um, how this reverser works. Um, it, it also applies in the in the reverse position. So they they both work the exact same way. So to get going, we're gonna put this into the full forward position. We're gonna do two toots on the whistle. To signify that we're gonna be going. I'm looking at the water gauge. I can see our water gauge. Um, the water gauge is pretty high, which is a good thing. 
Make sure that the shoulder cocks are open there. I wanna make sure the blower's closed, because we've been popping off for a while here. And so now we're on, I always like to look at the pressure gauge. And so this pressure gauge is, looks like it's not detailed correctly. But right there, there's a little red line. And basically what that means for that little red line is when these lift, and so these are called the safety valves, and at a certain pressure, they open, and they just, they release steam pressure back down to a safer point of the boiler, and it just, they, they keep the boiler from exploding. So that's why I like the, the locomotive safety measure. Now, like I said, looks like this one is either decaled incorrectly, or they, or like the needle isn't in the exact right place, um, because the red light is not there. But you can clearly hear it and see it that we do have steam out of both of those. That means we also have the max amount of steam pressure. Fire looks fine. Now this is not an advanced video, so I'm not going to be going over firing. I'll do that probably there in my own time. So now we're going to do. We have to make sure that that is open. Now we're going to do is we are going to release these. So the brakes are off, and now we're going to open the regulator. And got the. Open it quite slowly. And I'll show you what can happen if you open it too fast. Oh, didn't happen in this case. Sort of this thing is quite heavy for itself. I open on the F5 here, so you can just kind of watch all this stuff. And off we go. I'm just gonna close the cylinder cocks here. And now, I'm gonna start bringing the reverser back here. And you'll see I have to close um, the regulator. This only happens on, mostly on, like this sort of lever, sort of locomotive, um, this, uh, this sort of like reverser. And that's because, you know, it's directly connected to, like, all the valve gear here. And so when you have the steam pressure trying to act against it and trying to move it, and then you try moving this, it becomes really hard to move it at all. And most of the time it'll just snap forward if you're going fast enough. So, you know, that, that's why this one isn't moving. You know, we, we are in the decency range, so... 149.8, we fine. Our boiler water level is 86. So, combat that. We're gonna open up the water tank. You're gonna let it run. Some more. And then we can open the exhaust steam. Um, one, one important thing um, that really helped me that I learned is that I um, a steam locomotive in a much lower reverser gear and a much higher regulator um, setting just because you know you can really control a lot easier I like the littlest amount of steam that's going into the actual cylinder um, instead of just trying to use a little bit of regulator um, at a very high now that doesn't uh, you know at a very high you know, reverser setting but that doesn't mean that you should not use it like I'm still losing steam pressure here that's also mostly because I also need to show once we cold. This is this fire's probably gone down this entire time I've been talking. I'm not gonna go this entire way. Yeah. You can see that the boiler is still, still filling up 95. And you don't want it to get past I'd say like 99. And then um, eventually you're gonna start flooding the boiler and then water will actually get into like the regulator tubes. Um, and you can get hydraulic lock. So to turn off the injector, like you said, we're just going to do like the reverse. So we're going to turn off the steam first, and then we're going to turn off the water. Just like that. So now I'm going to close the regulator. I'm going to crack that a little bit. So then the steam pressure does start to go up. Just a hint. And now I'm just going to apply the combined brake. 
and now we're just gonna start to slow down here. Now, actually, you know, if we just do this, this will dump everything as fast as it can. We'll, we'll, we'll break the max amount. And look at that. Now we have stopped. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little tutorial here. It was, it's, it's pretty long, but... It's it's a lot of complicated stuff. I you know I tried my best to to really explain it. You know I, I love doing this sort of thing. If you guys have any questions, make sure to put them down in the comments. I'll do my best to try and help you. Um, and thank you all for watching and goodbye.